So the first question you've got there is, a, is an ethics question. I think the first five questions that you had were ethics questions. Now bear in mind here, this is uh, often quite typical. I think um, one thing you want to bear in mind with ethics questions is that they can be quite long-winded. Now I think once you get to practice a few of the ethics questions, get used to the kind of scenarios, similar scenarios often kind of, you know, get replicated as you move through your studies, um, you'll find that you do start to get a hang of the ethics section. Now, you know, if I was presented with a big question like this, obviously it's going to be quite time consuming. Now remember that on average it's a minute and a half per question. You'll find that um, some questions will be very, very quick. Others might be longer, but on average it will make up that minute and a half. So you know, one thing to remember for the exam is don't dwell on questions too much. Um, if you do get to a question, um, it is really quite a long one. You're thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm starting to waste time here. Then potentially just put a mark against it and then come back to it at a later date. As long as you're not doing that for every single question, obviously. But you know, be quite selective. Is that You do need to make sure that you go through the majority of the paper making sure that you answer the questions. And if there are one or two questions you think, hang on a minute, I'm getting a little bit confused, need to come back to it, review it at a later date, then obviously mark it up, and, and that's obviously good kind of exam um, kind of practice. Now, other things I would suggest with ethics questions, sometimes it can help you. Um, before you actually go and read the bulk of the text, it might be you know, reasonable just to take a look at possibly the last couple of sentences um, in the actual body of the text to find out what the examiner is asking you, for you to then go and read through the actual um, paragraph to then, as you read it, understand whether or not you can answer the question. You know, rather than potentially reading it first of all, not knowing what they're going to ask you, and then look at the ending text and actually go back into the question to find out again what is the correct or incorrect answer. So in this case it says how should Martindale react to potential threats? So you're kind of looking for you know, an avenue gives you a little bit of a precursor as to what might occur in the actual example itself. So Martindale, CFA, equity analyst with a company called Grey Brothers, developed a very good relationship with a company, their Jellico Laboratories, in the past. Um, he has enjoyed access to the management and has active participation in conference calls. You know, a lot of analysts will obviously want to know and understand the company that they might analyze, in which case having access to the management to discuss and also you know, reference to accounts helps them to kind of carry their job better. It says, lately Martindale has become convinced that the stock is overpriced, so I'm going to kind of highlight that, but worried about concluding strongly in their research report that's coming up for publication in case the management kind of react to that and you know, they retaliate. They might in the future deny access to the information that he had previously built up and, um, and have a reputation of aggressive treatment of analysts. So Martindale has issued a report that has an unfavorable recommendation on this company. Jellico's management have then reacted strongly to this report and have warned Martindale that his recommendation should improve next time. So they're almost kind of saying to him, we're actually you know, regardless of our fundamentals, we want you to issue a favorable recommendation um, and or they will kind of withdraw access to conference calls. So, you know, what might be the most appropriate reaction to these threats? We have an answer here. If you look on the next page, you'll find that we have a bit of a description there. We've mentioned that it comes from standard five and then in subsection A, you're not being required to know those references off by heart for the exam, but it's diligence and reasonable basis. We've got there the answer, which is B. It says stress that his report is objective, which is what he obviously wants to be as an analyst, and that all research he has conducted is based on you know, information that was in available. It's the fundamentals, kind of essentially the fact. If you're looking at A, making sure that his next report tempers his language such that his recommendations are ambiguous, obviously you wouldn't want to do that, so the management of Jellico will not be as aggressive to the response in the future. Obviously that is going to put in comp uh, a compromised position in terms of acting as an analyst where we should have obviously um, an objective and based off fundamental approach rather than being ambiguous. Um, so definitely not A. Looking at C, request to his supervisors that he stops having responsibility to covering Jellico. Yeah, okay, I, I suppose it could remove the issue that we have here, but remember, that is quite extreme. As an analyst, you might find that often you're presented with these sort of situations, so it's not uncommon, and therefore B represents the most appropriate answer where he suggests that it is objective and that it is conducted based off the company fundamentals.